Namaste. So in our last episode, we talked about infinite space. And what is space, really? Space is the complement of matter. It's the reciprocal of objects. And we talked about a bowl. Here it is. And how the space inside the bowl and outside the bowl are identical. And also how the space inside and outside the bowl traces exactly the opposite of the shape of the bowl. So space is the reciprocal of matter. And what is it about matter? <laughs> Matter is always limited. Matter always has a beginning and an end. In space as well as time. And when we talk about space, it includes time because space has dimension. It has extent, measurement. So as soon as you have dimension, you have a possibility of motion. And motion, of course, makes it possible to change. Change is how we measure time. So there is no such thing as just space. There is space-time. And this is because of the uh, possibility of space giving rise to measurement. But there's another thing about space that's very important here. Matter is limited. It always has a beginning and an end. But space has no beginning or end. Unlimited space, infinite space, means just that, no limits, no end to it. But since matter is always limited, that means there is much, much more space than there is matter. And even the whole cosmic manifestation with all of its galaxies and whatever is just a tiny, tiny little thing in the expanse of infinite space. So matter disappears in space. Matter becomes inconsequential in space. Matter, compared to infinite space, is infinitely small. So, you see, the, the conception of infinite space is the first step in what Buddha calls the uh, divine meditations. Divya jhanas. Uh -huh. Up until that point, our meditations within the realm of form. And so it's also limited. But meditation on space is not limited. It's infinite. And it's also a negation, a negation of matter. So, this jhana, or meditation, on infinite space is our first contact with the infinite, the endless, the unlimited, the timeless. And now the Buddha is going to expand that. So let's continue to read from the sutta. Further, Ananda, the monk, not attending to the perception of earth, not attending to the perception of the dimension of the infinity of space, attends to the singleness based on the perception of the dimension of the infinity of consciousness. His mind takes pleasure, finds satisfaction, 
settles and indulges in its perception of the dimension of the infinity of consciousness. So if there is an infinity of space, to be conscious of that infinity of space requires an infinity of consciousness. So this is the thing. Any thing without boundaries is infinite. Space is without boundaries. Therefore, it's infinite. Consciousness is also without boundaries. Just take a minute and look at your consciousness. Look at consciousness in general. Consciousness is unlimited. Consciousness can be focused here on the, the limited body and senses, but it can also be focused on unlimited space. And in that case, consciousness is unlimited. So the difference between limited consciousness and unlimited consciousness is that limited consciousness uses a limited object and unlimited consciousness focuses on an unlimited object. So when we become conscious of space and also time, because they go together, then consciousness becomes unlimited, infinite. And of course, what the Buddha is doing is step by step bringing us to Nibbana. Huh? So he's bringing us, first of all, from the consciousness of the village to the consciousness of the wilderness, from the wilderness to earth, from earth to space, from space to consciousness itself. Now this is where things get really interesting because if you simply contemplate your consciousness in empty space or consciousness of empty space and especially unlimited space, unbounded infinite space, you will get so blissful you fall off your chair. <laughs> Try it. Don't just take my word for it. All these things that we discuss here are meant for practical application. They're not just theory. They're meant to be realized in the here and now. And this is for your benefit. So you should try these things as exercises, as practices. It's not just a philosophy. It's not just a theory. So let's go on. He discerns that whatever disturbances that would exist based on the perception of earth are not present. Whatever disturbances that would exist based on the perception of the dimension of the infinity of space are not present. There is only this modicum of disturbance, the singleness based on the perception of the dimension of the infinity of consciousness. He discerns that this mode of perception is empty of the perception of earth. This mode of perception is empty of the perception of the dimension of the infinity of space. There is only this non-emptiness, the singleness based on the perception of the dimension of the infinity of consciousness. Thus, he regards it as empty of whatever is not there. Whatever remains, he discerns as present. There is this. And so this, his entry into emptiness, accords with actuality, is undistorted in meaning and pure. So this is wonderful. Huh? This is beautiful. This is how we pass from <laughs> being a human being, huh? basically a a bag of meat and bones <laughs> it's plastered to the surface of a planet by gravity 
to a free being of pure consciousness. This is something very valuable. This is something very important that you should know and practice. This emptiness. Because the monk discerns the perception of earth is not there. It's an emptiness. He discerns that the presence, or sorry, that the perception of the infinity of space is not there. It is also an emptiness. So the monk perceives the absence of the things to which he is not paying attention. That's what attending means. He's not paying attention to the earth. Although he may, his body may be sitting on the earth, his attention is not bound by the body. Although the body and the earth and everything may be situated in unlimited space, he's not paying attention to unlimited space. He's paying attention to unlimited consciousness pervading that space. Now, this is a whole different game. Huh? This is the big game. This is the ocean. We're out of the pool now. No more limits. So, <laughs> this is how we get from being an ordinary being stuck in a body to being a free, self-realized being with no limitations. The Buddha is giving us the keys here. Huh? Because what are we? We're not an individual. We're not a limited being. We're unlimited. We are the whole. Brahman, if you want to use a positivist term for it. But we're not limited. We're not stuck in a single location. We can be everywhere. Consciousness is everywhere. We may call it the consciousness of God or Brahman or whatever we like, Tao, <laughs> or whatever. But the fact is, there is a presence of consciousness everywhere. And the experience of first path realization is seeing that directly. So the Buddha now is bringing us into the path. The first path is seeing this consciousness everywhere. You can train yourself to see consciousness everywhere. And it's not my consciousness anymore. Because to get to that range, to get to that state, you have to let go of the idea of being an individual, of being limited, of being stuck in one location, of only having one point of view. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, uh, I had an accident on my bike. And the, uh, the gear shift, in those days, bikes had a gear shift on the handle. Huh? The gear shift lever went right between my eyes. You can still see the scar, I think, if you look at it in a certain way. There. And anyway, they rushed me to the hospital. <laughs> and the on-call doctor stitched me up. And he gave me a sedative. So, of course, this is the third eye, right? <laughs> So, I guess my third eye was activated. I suddenly found myself floating in the air, looking down on the doctor and my mother <laughs> while he's stitching me up. And I thought, this is interesting. And so, I scooted along the ceiling and went outside and looked at a couple of different rooms in the hospital. 
And then I came back to the room where my body was and my mother and the doctor were talking outside the room. So I went back in and I got back into my body, took a little nap <laughs> and then woke up. And later on, I told my mother what had happened. And she said, come on, you were asleep. You were just dreaming. But then I told her about her conversation with the doctor outside the room and what they had said to each other. And she goes, um, uh. <laughs> she never mentioned it again. <laughs> Neither did I. But that happened. At that point, I realized, wait a minute, I'm not limited by this body. And I gradually trained myself to disassociate my consciousness from the body. I got pretty good at it. So anyway, you can train yourself to have a point of view outside your body. You can train yourself to have an unlimited consciousness. You can train yourself to realize the first path, that everything is due to a cause, and that cause is ultimately consciousness. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Harihi Aum, Buddha Saranai.